a great project for integrating hardware and software is developing video games. So today we're going to build a simple mini arcade and write the necessary Arduino code to run our own version of the Pong video game. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by NextPCB. They're currently offering a free PCB prototype with your first order. The ordering process on their website is pretty straightforward. They offer a wide variety of options and with their current promotions, you can get five prototypes for free. They're both ISO 14001 and 9001 certified, so they produce really high quality boards. Besides their manufacturing services, they also cover the processes of sourcing components, PCB manufacturing, assembly, testing, and final shipment. For this video, I'm going to be using several members of the Wemos family of development boards for the ESP8266. The Mini Arcade will be powered by the Wemos D1 Mini development board for the ESP8266. The SoC will control a 128 by 64 pixel OLED screen. I'll also be using a couple of proto shields to mount the controls and the screen and also a battery shield so that I can make it portable. Everything will be mounted on a 2x1 dual base shield. As usual, you can find all of these components in my little Amazon shop. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. The assembly process takes a little bit of time, but it's pretty straightforward. I'll leave a link to the schematics in the description of the video. You're welcome to follow along or just skip ahead if you're more interested in the code side of things. With everything assembled, I'll go ahead and jump onto the Arduino IDE. I'll create a new sketch, save it as Wemos underscore Pong, and using the library manager, I'll install the library that will allow me to control the OLED screen from the ESP8266. After installing the library, I'll be sure to include it in my sketch. The next thing I'll do is define the pins where I connected the buttons. Then in the setup function, I'll set these pins as inputs and I'll use the internal pull-up resistor. I'll call the begin method of the built-in serial object so that I have a way to print debug messages onto the serial monitor. Then in the loop function, the first thing I'll do is call a user-defined function that I'll name move and I'll define that next. For now, in the move function, I'll simply print out a debug message to the serial monitor depending on which button is pressed. I'll then go ahead and connect the Wemos D1 Mini to the USB port of my computer. With the connection made, I'll use the Tools menu option to select the correct board and port for this setup. If I open the serial monitor, I should see the debug message is printed if everything is connected correctly. With the controls working, I can now test the OLED screen. Using the corresponding class for the particular screen that I have, I'll instantiate an object that I'll name OLED. Then in the setup function, I'll call a user defined function that I'll name OLED config for setting up the display. And in the loop function, I'll call another user defined function that I'll name display. In OLED config, I'll call the begin method to start the communication with the screen. Then I'll set the font that I want to use. I'll choose a small one so that I can display the score and other things in the 128 by 64 pixels that I have available. 
I'll also set a few other parameters so that everything displays correctly on the screen. Then in the display function, I'll write the code that's needed to display a simple test string on the display. With those changes made, I'll upload the code to the ESP8266 to ensure that the screen is working properly. If everything looks good with the hardware, both with the display and the buttons, we can now move to writing our very own version of Pong. For the game, we'll need three main components. The ball, the players, which are the bars we move up and down, and the graphical user interface where we display the score and other things on the screen. We'll need to define a few parameters to describe the ball, the position, its radius, and its speed. Somewhat similarly for the players, we'll need an X and Y position for each player, as well as a speed. This version will be a single player, so the second one will be controlled by code that we will write a little bit later. Then for the user interface, we'll need to define a few parameters like the width of the height of the screen, as well as the game area, the size of the player's pads, and the different score values that we will display. So now we can configure the game. We start by in the setup function setting the initial position and velocity of the ball. Then the very first thing that happens is that we need to update the position and the velocity of the objects on the screen. So if we go to the move function, we check to see if the ball has reached any boundary. And in that case, we need to switch its direction. With the direction of the ball set, we can go ahead and update its position. Next, we check the different button inputs so that we can update the position of the player's bar. We also need to make sure that it doesn't fly off the screen, so if the bar is already at the edge, just leave it there. With the player's position updated, we can now update the computer's bar according to a very simple algorithm. For the simplest version of AI that we can program, we'll simply track the direction of the ball. If it's going down, we move the bar down, and if it's going up, we move the bar up. After both the player's and the computer's bars are updated, we check to see if there is either a score or if the ball has hit one of the pads. For determining the score, we just check the ball position and see if it intersects the boundary of the player's goal. We can do something similar to determine if the players has scored. In either case, we update the score and reposition the ball in the center of the playing area. Whether there is a score or not, we can always set the UI string to display the current scores. So now, with the game dynamics updated, we can actually work on what's displayed on the screen. Instead of our test string, we'll want to display the ball, the string with the current score, the playing field, and the two pads or bars for the player and the computer. The last thing I'll add is just a little message for when the game is over. This can be a little different for when the computer wins versus when the player wins. I'll also add a pause until the player hits a key for resuming the game. So with everything programmed in, we can go ahead and upload the code, and if we haven't made any typos, we should see a working version of the video game Pong. One thing we can do is increase the difficulty of the very simple AI that's controlling the computer's bar. One way to do this is to start keeping track of how long the rallies are. If the rally goes for a long time, the speed of the ball should increase. And because the computer has an advantage, then we can set a mercy rule so that the speed resets when the computer wins. For now, I'll just upload this new version of the code, and if everything's working correctly, I should see the ball increase its speed as the rally goes on. So there you have it, to get a bit of an understanding how we can write software that works on a particular hardware, we've built a mini arcade and wrote software for our very own version of the video game Pong. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe or leave me a comment. 
You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos and I will see you next time.